Hello, everyone, and welcome to you. I welcome to you all across the country. We have about 40 university and colleges and companies and government colleagues on the line today. And I know many of you are gathered together with your colleagues. So thank you all very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, my name is Melissa Nisbet, and I'm here with my colleagues from CBAE's membership and business development teams to present this webinar, CBAE Services and What We Do For You. Uh, here at CBAE, we are in one of our conference rooms, and we have a number of our own colleagues joining us today. Uh, I'm going, we are going to hear from some of my colleagues. I'm just going to name off their names. So Lisa Deakin, Katarina Angler, Janine knight Goffa, Erica Stewart, and again, myself. So as I mentioned, I'm Melissa, and I'm CBAE's Communications Manager. I've been at CBAE for three years, and it's been a, a pleasure to meet many of you at regional meetings, at our conferences, and other events across the world, uh, as well as being able to connect with you through social media. So I hope to see you all at our conference in November at Niagara Falls. So just before we get started, I just want to go over some housekeeping rules. Uh, we really want to encourage you to participate in today's webinar. So feel free to ask questions and share your comments with us. We'll be taking your questions and comments at the end. So if you have any technical issues throughout the webinar, please email jknight, J-K-N-I-G-H-T, at cbie.ca, or give us a call at 613 237 4820 extension 245. So that's CBAE's main number and then with the extension 245. So to ask a question, please write it in the question box and we'll raise your question with the group towards the end. A few days after the webinar, we'll be sending out the presentation slides and the video recording for your own use. So we're ready to get started now. Uh, again, welcome to CBAE Services, what we do for you. Just to give an outline of what we're going to chat about today, uh, we're going to give an overview of CBAE and a little bit about the organization, uh, a breakdown of all of CBAE services and how it kind of can uh, work in terms of your goals, and then we'll take questions at the end. So we thought that would be, be really fun to have a poll. So before we launch into the session, we'd like to know how long you've been working in international education. So you'll see a poll pop up on your screen. So please take a moment to choose an answer, and if you're out with several people, the person sitting at the computer can answer. So we're seeing almost 100%. Uh, uh, we've got like 90% voted, so we'll just uh, close that poll and you'll see the uh, results on your screen. Um, we can just share with you that 42% of you are working in internationalization from one to four years, about 30%, five to 10 years, 21% over 10 years, and 3% do not work in international education. So CBAE is the Canadian bilingual organization dedicated exclusively to international education. And what really differs us from other associations is that we are all about international education. So we focus um, that theme in terms of research policy, advocacy, and products. And everything that we do are members of the core of our work. So we do a lot of surveys, a lot of uh, engagement with our members in person, on a course online, to solicit their info in terms of what they want us to do. So you help set the agenda. Uh, everything we do in terms of data research, we want it to benefit you. So we want to make sure that we are getting uh, the, the information that you need to do your jobs as well. In terms of our governance, In terms of our governance, uh, our patron is the Governor General of Canada, so His Excellency uh, the Right Honourable David Johnson. We've actually had the privilege of having him attend our annual conference uh, last year, and he's a very big supporter of international education, so we're great to have him uh, promote our cause as well. Our, our board is a policy-oriented board, and it meets two to three times a year to oversee our activities. Uh, we're very excited because our board uh, is revealed a new strategic plan for the next three years, so we'll be sharing that with our members uh, this coming fall. Also, our board, uh, we have members that are elected and appointed from different institutions across the country, and we try to represent all of, all of aspects of international education. So we have seven key services you'll be hearing about today. Uh, so PLC networks and committees, marketing, recruitment and support, 
research and advocacy, professional development and recognition, conferences and events, scholarship management, and international partnerships and business development. CBE is celebrating its 50th anniversary in 2016, so we have a long history uh, working all across the globe. Currently, we have worked in more than 60 countries, and our staff speak over 17 languages. And so we have another poll, just to get to know you better. How many continents have you visited? So we know that many of you are very um, internationalist and citizens of the world, so instead of asking how many countries you visited, which can vary, which can vary, we ask about how many continents. And so we have a little prize to give away. So anyone who's visited all seven continents wins a free copy of our World of Learning 2014, which is our flagship research documents on trends in international education. We have over 60% of people who have been to four to six continents, which is quite amazing. Um, almost everyone's voted, so we'll just share those results right on screen. And uh, yeah, it's quite... Uh, Quite an international group we've got there. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating. And now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Janine to talk about PLCs, networks, and committees. So, um, one of the main services that we provide to our members are our um, professional learning communities, our networks, and our committees. Professional learning communities are networks of international education practitioners and stakeholders who meet to communicate and enrich their knowledge of international education. So PLCs um, are outcome driven and have people on them who teach and um, conduct research, they manage, uh, so practitioners and researchers alike form part of our professional learning community. The, we currently have PLCs focused on enhancing student success optimizing recruitment and retention, encouraging par partnerships, and fostering leadership among professionals. So these are the Student Services PLC for the success of international students inbound, and the Education Abroad PLC for Canadian students outbound. Uh, Kim Suki, a new PLC focused on uh, smaller universities and college and their internationalization efforts. The Recruitment and Admissions PLC for those who are interested in recruitment, enrollment, and the retention of international students, um, as well as uh, the International Network of Tomorrow's Leaders. And I'll turn to my colleague Lisa, who will speak a little bit more about the INTL. Thanks, Janine. Um, it's really great to have the opportunity to talk about the INTL today, especially um, seeing from that earlier poll that the majority of the people in the webinar today are actually falling into that uh, category of new to the international education sector. So um, we thought we'd spend a little bit of time uh, on this group in particular. So the mission of the International Network of Tomorrow's Leaders, or INTL, is essentially to provide an environment for new professionals and emerging leaders to self-identify, cultivate professional networks, and really get engaged in the community of of Canadian international education. So what the INTL looks like today is that we have a group of 24 working group members and associates from member institutions across Canada who are essentially volunteering their time um, outside of their professional hours to support um, networking and professional opportunities professional development opportunities for their peers in our sector. So it's a very active and engaged group, and they've managed to achieve quite a bit of different uh, opportunities and, and programming for, for their peers. So there's a, an, a mentorship program which is currently active. There are 30 pairs matched across the country who are um, exchanging uh, mentorship, both you know, from a senior leader to someone who's newer to the sector, but also re reverse mentoring is also happening in those pairs. So that's a really great program that the INTL uh, totally runs on their own. Um, the INTL is also very present if you've ever attended the annual conference or any of the regional meetings, um, INTL, uh, thanks to the networking group, has taken the initiative to make sure that there are special activities that would be of interest to new professionals at those uh, events where we are all able to gather. The INTL also uh, manages uh, the distribution of annual bursaries, uh, which cover the cost to register for our annual conference. Um, thanks to GuardMe's generous sponsorship, uh, this year 10 uh, new professionals in the sector who have not had 
the chance previously to attend the CBIE conference will be awarded bursaries um, and the INTL helps with the selection and promotion of those bursaries. Um, so unfortunately that, con that contest just closed on July 21st but I'll say good luck to everybody who, who did get their submission in. Um, it's really easy to connect with the INTL. There's a web page on the CBIE site. There's an INTL LinkedIn group. Um, you can also follow them on Twitter. So basically any way that you like to connect, uh, it's right there. And you'll see in the slides that it's li live linked. So um, once we distribute the slides, you'll be able to, uh, to get connected. And, Thanks, Janine. Oh, sorry. And launching um, at Conference 2015 will be our newest PLC, which is dedicated to research and evaluation. So you can look out for that uh, at our conference. Um, like Lisa said, it's really uh, easy to connect with our PLCs. Um, there are specific ways to connect with the INTL, but in terms of our other PLCs, you can follow their discussion boards um, or their emails by logging into CBIE's members only area of the website. Um, and uh, we also offer three active listservs that provide virtual networking opportunities. So those are the Student Services, which is SACE, um, Education Abroad, which is mobile, and Admissions Recruitment and Marketing, Rec Admin. To join a listserv, uh, you can send an email to Alisar Hajar, and you can see her email address on the screen there. Also, the Research and Evaluation PLC to come will be up and running uh, with a listserv in the coming weeks. Um, PLCs also have meetings during our annual conference, and at those meetings they discuss their annual work plan, uh, issues of common interest, and they do professional development as well as networking, and those meetings are open to anyone who is interested. We also have a number of networks and committees. So one of our networks is the Internationalization Leaders Network, and that network is really aimed at strengthening links with senior leaders in our membership. It's an, an invitation-only meeting that's attended by strategic IE leaders, and this is normally presidents and vice presidents. The last meeting was in May, and the next one will take place on the margins of our conference in Niagara Falls. We also have a number of uh, committees. The Education Abroad Advisory Committee is one of our, our newer committees, uh, very active. Uh, this year, you may have seen that they launched a lexicon on terms in education abroad. Um, we've heard from our members, and we realize that we need to uh, just do a little bit of a greater focus on French terminology, so we will be doing that uh, soon. And the lexicon is really a first step uh, towards defining education abroad tracking standards. If you have any uh, feedback on the education abroad lexicon, please feel free to send an email to lexicon at cbie.ca. The Immigration Advisory Committee is one of our uh, oldest and active, most active committees, and it's been in existence for two decades. They continually provide uh, a key role and play a key role in CBIE advocacy. They are a dedicated expert group of member reps who uh, they monitor trends in immigration policy and practice. They also identify issues, and as I mentioned, they provide guidance to our advocacy in immigration. It's a really important area of member expertise, and they played a key role in, uh, in, in helping us in terms of our consultations uh, around the international education strategy, around the changes to the international student program, which took place last year. And they you know, always bring the most pertinent and salient issues that are affecting uh, members, particularly ISAs dealing with international students. They bring those to the fore so that we can look into them a little bit more on behalf of our members. Um, so, uh, so we meet with uh, with the Immigration Advisory Committee. We meet with uh, CIC Citizenship and Immigration Canada fairly frequently to represent your your concerns. Uh, we also have a Professional Recognition Advisory Committee, and they will provide guidance and advice to us at CBIE as we develop a professional recognition uh, standard for for our members. As well, we have a senior advisory committee, um, and those are made up of uh, a senior leaders at member institutions across the country who provide us with a little bit more concrete advice um, and insight into strategy as well as operations. So I'm going to pass it over to uh, Lisa and Melissa now, who are going to talk a little bit about our marketing and rec recruitment support for our members. Thanks, Janine. So in addition to the um, professional learning community, which is geared towards recruitment uh, and admissions, 
we here on the membership team also offer several different ways that we can help our member institutions to uh, market themselves and profile themselves um, internationally. So um, one of the ways that we do this is through the CBIE Student Center. Um, which is a, a growing and comprehensive website which features scholarships um, offered by Canadian governments and international governments, so prospective uh, international students to Canada and both Canadian students are, are checking there for scholarships. We list all of our members. Uh, we have three different directories which prospective students to Canada can find uh, our different members across the country. We also have a uh, fairly active blogging platform on the website. Uh, we have over 100 blogs to date featuring Canada as a study destination and providing Canadian students with information and uh, a bit of motivation about education abroad opportunities from our member institutions. We've also been able to feature uh, around 50 or so um, member institutions themselves in on the blogging platform. So member institutions who said, hey, we have this great program that we'd like to profile more with international students or we'd like to feature something unique about our campus um, so that prospective students who are considering Canada as a study de destination know um, what the options are and, and can see uh, where our members are active and engaged and what they have to offer. Um, Another way that we offer marketing and recruitment support sort of in this suite uh, of digital services is through our Twitter, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn accounts. Um, so what we essentially do is through, uh, you know, if you have content or um, anything that you're putting up on our student center, we're always very pleased to share that through our uh, social media channels. So I'll just pack, pass it to Melissa to talk more about those. So. Um, many of you, I hope, are on are following us on social media. Uh, we're very, very active, and if you have any links or anything your institutions are doing that's really neat in international education, feel free to share with us. We're very responsive, and we'll love to share it with all of our followers. Also, if you have a blog or any social media pages that we can link to, you have any photo contests or anything you want students to engage in, we'll be happy to share that as well. CBAE also has a blog that is called Without Borders. It's currently on hiatus for the summer because many of our institutions are on vacation, many of the individuals there, but it will start back in about the second last week of August. So if you have any ideas for a blog, please feel free to send me an email and we always feature it uh, every week and for basically September to December, and then there's a pause for the Christmas break, and then from January on to uh, end of June. So we can do that as well. Um, International Education Week is taking place November 23rd to 27th this year, and we'll feature our members' events and activities that week on our Student Center web pages and as well through social media. So send us your stories, any articles, any photos, any events that you're doing that week. We'll be interested and very happy to share it. So it's never too early to start thinking about it. So CBIE has been doing a research and advocacy work on behalf of our members for, for many years. Um, before I launch into some of our newer research products, I wanted to mention at the outset that we have an open call for papers for our PhD research series. Um, this, this series explores social, cultural, management, and policy-related issues of international education in any aspect uh, of the discipline. So it could be from education abroad to student advising to management to policy. Um, the call is open until July 31st, so that's next Friday. We're grateful for uh, your, your submissions if you've already submitted. Um, if you are doing a PhD and uh, you're just hearing about this call now, uh, please feel free to, uh, to connect with us and uh, we can always talk about how we can get your submission in on time. Um, and if you know people who are doing their PhD and may not know about this series, please do, in international education, um, please do share the information with them. It's a, a call that's open to our members only and it's for PhD students or staff completing their PhDs at our member institutions and doing work in international education. Um, so that's not the, the open call that we have. We also have a couple of research series that we launched this year uh, in 2014 and 2015. The Research in Brief series is uh, it's really designed to complement some of our more in-depth uh, research offerings. It provides regular short papers on salient and timely themes 
And we also have a new series of market reports that provides current trends in international education markets that CBIE has been working in and that we know that our members are, are gaining more interest in. Uh, the research in brief papers can be found on our website in the research and publications section. The marker reports are, a, uh, are for members only and those uh, will be posted in our members only area. Another key research area for CBIE is our annual international student survey. And um, the 2015 survey is now complete and we had over 4,000 responses uh, from 35 institutions across the country. We thank very much many of you um, and those of you who worked with us to have your institution included in our 2015 survey sample. Um, if you'd like to know more about the survey uh, or you're interested in having your institution take part next year, Lisa will be happy to give you further information and all of our email addresses will be available at the end of the presentation. The data on international students from this survey is really excellent uh, and it provides up-to-date pulse on the student experience and can really provide your institution with benchmark insights. And also we have our principal annual publication, A World of Learning, and this details Canada's performance and potential in international education. In the report, we have case studies from our member schools and institutions, as well as data on international students from CIC and Statistics Canada, and as well it features results from our international student survey. The 2015 report will be launched at our conference in November, and this year we have a feature on international student pathways, so look out for that. We've got really interesting, exciting data on that. So just to mention that uh, all of our research is available uh, on our website, um, some for members only, but some you can access uh, freely at the in the research and publication section of our website. And also much of CBIE's research is available in ERIC, which is the Education Resources Information Center. In terms of our advocacy, our research really serves as a basis for all of our advocacy efforts um, and consultations with you, our, our members, um, and we really are aiming through our advocacy to remove impediments and achieve improvements on behalf of members in international education broadly. Uh, our advocacy, as I mentioned, is guided by our members, by our board of directors, by our research, um, and, and you know, drawing on member expertise in key areas. Right now, we're increasing our attention to education abroad. So we've been calling for, uh, on the federal government, to really invest in education abroad through submissions to federal committees. We know that you at your institutions are doing and have done for many years uh, providing grants and scholarships and information on education abroad, but we also all know that Canadian students really need to get abroad in, in greater numbers and in, in different and more unique and innovative ways. Um, and, and we all know also that we're kind of lagging behind our competitors, countries in, in those areas. So unfortunately, uh, though we've all been advocating uh, on behalf of education abroad, the 2015 budget did not include a significant investment in, in mobility for Canadian students. Um, but, but, you know, given its importance, CBIE is really going to continue our efforts in this area. Another key advocacy area that we've been working on for many years, um, particularly increasing our efforts in the area in the last three years, is on immigration, specifically the law and regulations relating to foreign students. So with the help of our Immigration Advisory Committee that I mentioned earlier, we've made many representations to CIC, Citizenship and Immigration Canada, and we've worked with our partners in the Consortium for International Education and our members in, in bringing issues uh, to the fore on immigration. Uh, for example, with our Immigration Advisory Committee, we are aware that one of the most salient issues that our members are dealing with right now are lengthy processing times for study permit renewals and post-graduation work permits. And we had a, a communication that went out last week um, that kind of details some of the, uh, the representations we've been making with CIC on that matter. And if you're interested in more immigration information and some of our advocacy efforts in that area, then uh, please be in contact with us. Switching gears a little bit, another key service is our professional development and recognition for, for members. And first I'd like to talk about our Excellence Awards. Our Excellence Awards have been, I think CBA has been doing this for almost since our existence, and it's really designed to honor the excellence um, in the field of international education at different levels um, in a range of specialities, and the award categories refer to our main pillars of expertise, knowledge, opportunity, and leadership. It's one of the 
things that we do here at CVIE that we're most excited about. We absolutely, you know, love the opportunity to recognize all of the good work that's happening within our membership. And awards are, are given out at our conference annually. We also have a professional recognition portfolio program in development. The PRPP will offer a career portfolio management program as well as recognize international education practitioners commitment to professionalism through a competency based approach. So if you'd like more information about that, you can contact Veronica Sanchez, who's working on that. And again, our email addresses will be available uh, at the end. Um, we may have seen communication from CBIE about the regulated international student immigration advisor training program that's also in development. So in terms of this program, we're really committed to creating uh, a program that fulfills the criteria requested by you, our members, uh, and other educational institutions. So it's going to be focused on the scope of practice needed by ISAs to support their students. It will be offered in English and in French. It's designed for in-service learners, so it's going to be online, flexible, um, offered partly in recorded format and partly in real time. It will reflect provincial territorial differences in immigration regulations, and it will be affordable to ensure that institutions can provide the program to new ISAs on a sustainable basis. So look out for that. CBIE is working on that, and we hope to get that started by the end of the year. And just to kind of take your pulse on that program, the RECIA training program, we're going to launch another poll to ask if you or someone in your institution would be likely to take a CBIE offered RECIA training. So that poll is available on your screen and we're seeing lots of votes coming in already. Great. It looks like there's a really um, good response to uh, to taking this program. Let's wait, you know, a couple more moments uh, to get uh, a few more responses, and then we'll share the results. So, you know, most of you uh, would be willing and and. and would like to take that kind of program. Some of you are unsure, but uh, but I think you know we definitely tapped into something that uh, you're you're interested in, and we'll be uh, we'll be looking into developing that program. So another way that we support capacity is through our webinars, um, such as the one you're on today. Um, and uh, we also have a number of professional development webinars. Uh, they cover you know, the hottest topics and emerging issues, as well as the latest research in international education. They also allow participants to access cost-effective training and stay you know, ahead of the curve on what's happening in international education. So far this year, we've had professional development webinars on partnering with universities in Europe, um, how to maximize your relationships with education agents, ensuring quality control with education agents, collaborative degree programs, um, and intercultural training of inbound and outbound students. And we have more in development for this year on areas such as immigration, making the most of our, our conference, and supporting international students in mental health. And if you have any ideas for webinars, we would love to you know, offer more webinars. So please do be in contact with me and we'll, we'll do our best to provide you know, all the, the, the type of webinars and the type of training that, that you'd like to see. I'm going to turn it over to Erica, who is going to uh, talk to us a little bit about conferences and events. So in order to reach out to all of our member institutions, which are located in every province in Canada, uh, CBIE facilitates the organization of regional meetings, which are um, customized agendas to the regional needs and requirements. Uh, along with receiving CBIE's updates on national activities and initiatives, members take the opportunity to focus on particular matters that are important to them. Uh, they come together to share benchmarks, institutional expectations, emerging trends and realities, and other information of mutual benefit. Coordinated by a uh, committee of member representatives with input from CBIE, regional meetings offer a team building and effective networking opportunity for member institutions specific to that region. Regional meetings take place once a year, typically in the spring or early summer. 
and meetings are hosted in Ontario, Quebec, and the Atlantic region. And CBIE is also present uh, at the BCCIE Summer Seminar, where we connect with members from Central and Western Canada. If you think that your institution may be interested in hosting a regional meeting, please let us know. So I'll just pause for a moment as we take our final poll, and we're curious to see how many of you have uh, been to a CBIE regional meeting or annual conference. The poll should appear now. And we've pretty much got majority of responses in. And we'll share those with you. It looks like the majority of you on, um, <laughs> excuse me, attending today's webinar have not been to a regional meeting or annual conference. And we're hoping that that's also part of the reason you're attending today's webinar is maybe uh, you're just familiarizing yourself with CBIE. And uh, as a result, we are really hoping that uh, you will join us at future regional meetings or our annual conference in November. And a good portion of you have um, been to a few of our events. So we hope to see you again in the future. So speaking of our annual conference, every year CBIE hosts its annual International Education Conference. The conference is Canada's premier international education event. It draws over 800 participants from over 40 countries around the world. Uh, participants include presidents, vice presidents of institutions, directors of international, recruiters and marketers, international student advisors, faculty and researchers, Government representatives, the private sector, NGO, not-for-profit organization, uh, I'm kind of naming everyone here, but you name it, and we have a lot of people present. Uh, there's also representation from across the education sector. So this includes universities, colleges, polytechnics, institutes, language schools, and the K-12 sector. The conference is a three and a half day uh, event and typically rotates in location between Eastern, Central, and Western Canada. The conference, sorry, some of the conference highlights include an intensive pre-conference professional development workshops, uh, information sessions on countries and regions, keynote speakers from around the world, uh, as was already mentioned, the release of CBIE's annual World of Learning research. We have concurrent sessions focusing on timely themes, including our new lightning rounds this year. Uh, we have an international education fair with uh, nearly 30 exhibitors and an array of networking and social events, including our annual gala. This year, uh, CBI's annual conference will be held in Niagara Falls from November 22nd to 25th. The theme this year is Global Engagement, Crossing Borders, Connecting Generations, which looks to explore how we ensure that internationalization is top of mind, not only for our institutions, but for governments, business, and especially our students. The registration is now open for the conference. Uh, please visit our website to register. To kick off CBIE's annual conference is the Annual International Education Forum. Now this is a full day regionally focused event, <laughs> excuse me, that brings together key decision makers and stakeholders in education from Canada and countries of the focus region. In previous years, the forum has focused on Central America and the Caribbean, Middle East and North African countries, countries and regions of the Francophonie, uh, ASEAN countries and Pacific Alliance countries amongst others. It is a really unique opportunity to explore ways of supporting education sectors in these participating countries, fostering collaboration, and facilitating the development of sustainable relationships and partnerships. The forum this year is titled Canada Southeast Asia Partners Forum. It's featuring the countries of Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Vietnam. And as I mentioned, it kicks off the conference, so it will be taking place on November 22nd. One quick thing I did want to mention is the afternoon features some really interesting thematic panels on the topics of labor market responsiveness in education from TVET to PPPs, research collaboration, and recruitment and marketing. And I'll also of note is all of these panels will feature speakers from both Canada and the five focus countries. Registration for the forum is also open and is available on our website under the conference registration page. Uh, the forum, as I mentioned, is a really great opportunity if you're looking to build your networks or presence in these countries. 
Next, we'll touch on uh, CBIE scholarship management. CBIE manages and administers numerous scholarship programs, uh, including Canadian-sponsored and internationally-sponsored scholarships on behalf of Canadian government departments, education partners, and foreign governments. When it comes to scholarship management, CBIE is a key intermediary between scholarship sponsors, the education sector, and our member institutions. We collaborate directly with funding agencies and clients on negotiating the terms and conditions of scholarship programs, we liaise with education officials to expedite applications and admissions, and we help guide students through the university or college application process. We also have expertise in academic placement, student assistance, monitoring, financial management, and reporting. We also regularly scope and identify scholarship program opportunities in new markets, and our members are informed of new scholarship programs. We also continuously expand our networks of contacts in Canada and abroad to build bridges between members and potential partners. So our efforts are always to help promote our member institutions as well as to promote Canada as a destination of choice. Through these scholarship programs, CBIE helps bring international students to our member institutions and helps members internationalize their campuses. Currently, CBIE is managing over 3,500 students in Canada, in the United States, and abroad. So here's a list of some of the scholarship programs that CBIE is currently managing. Uh, quite a variety of programs, and I'll just mention a few that um, are newer to CBIE. Uh, one being the Programme Canadien des Bourses de la Francophonie. Uh, this program was launched back in 1987 and includes 37 countries. Uh, in January of 2015, the management of the program was awarded to a CBIE West Consortium. And this is a the DFAT-D, or Department of Foreign Affairs Trade and Development funded program. And its objective is sustainable de development in beneficiary countries. Uh, it includes study programs at the technical, masters, and PhD levels in Canada. Uh, and secondly, I'll mention quickly the African Leaders of Tomorrow Scholarship Program. This was launched in January 2015, so it's quite recent. It commemorates the late Nelson Mandela's commitment to social justice and equity. It's also a DFAT-D funded program uh, along with the MasterCard Foundation. Uh, it's a master's program in Canada in public administration, public policy, or public finance, and is, uh, includes about 30 scholarships per year. Uh, it is open to men and women between the ages of 22 and 35 years of age from Sub-Saharan Africa and CBIE is in partnership with IPAC on this program. So if you like any, um, if your institution or yourself would like any more information on how to become involved with uh, those two scholarship programs or any of those listed on uh, the slide, uh, feel free to contact us or visit our website and there's quite a bit of information on each of these programs. Hi everyone, my name is Katerina. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about our international projects and partnerships, part of our business development efforts. Um, I'll begin by saying that since its establishment in 1966, CBIE has implemented over 100 international education and capacity building projects in 60 countries worldwide. These projects are done in collaboration with or on behalf of global partners, including the Canadian government, United Nations, international governments, international education institutions, as well as the private sectors. Our main areas of focus for international projects cross three areas. These include institutional design, development, and management, training and skills development, and finally, capacity building partnerships. We also conduct partnership building through a mix of study tours, collaboration, and exploratory missions. To give you a sense of our work, some of our most recent international projects include a principal training program in Kuwait, developing an internationalization strategy for a private K-12 school in the Dominican Republic, supporting the establishment of the College of North Atlantic's offshore campus in Qatar, and building capacity for the government in Ukraine in rolling out its legal aid system. Members play an important role in our international projects, partnerships, and business development efforts. 
One way that you as a member institution can work with us is by participating in collaboration missions for international delegations. CBIE brings government officials, rectors, faculty members from different regions of the world to Canada and facilitates vi visits and networking with Canadian education institutions and research facilities. These missions are centered around common themes. For example, CBIE organized collaboration missions for agrarian universities from the Ukraine coming to Canada, as well as institutions from Chile, Mexico and Peru who were interested in learning more about academic programs in the area of mining. In addition to bringing um, other institutions and representatives to Canada, CB CBIE also conducts exploratory missions to countries and regions of interest to develop and strengthen linkages between our members and targeted stakeholders in education and capacity building sectors. To give you some examples, last year CBIE went to the Maghreb, Vietnam, Colombia, Brazil, Ecuador, among others, to explore opportunities and begin building relationships. These activities often lead to memoranda of understandings for, un for student and faculty mobility, research collaborations, and other knowledge exchange or capacity building activities. As mentioned earlier, CBIE also supports education and capacity building worldwide by responding to requests for technical assistance from the Canadian government, the World Bank, foreign governments, the private sector. Oftentimes, we act as the project manager of consortiums, which allow us to bring together the technical expertise of our members in order to ensure the project's success and respond to the needs required. If you'd like to learn more about our business development efforts and how you as a member institution can get involved, uh, please join us in late September or early October for a webinar and discussion of CBIE's international project themes and regions of interest. We will also provide more information on opportunities for collaboration with CBIE on upcoming bids for international projects, collaboration and exploratory missions, as well as upcoming consultancy opportunities. The details, including time and date, are to be determined, but we hope to chat with you then. Thanks, Kat. So if, you, uh, if your institution is not yet a member of CBIE, please be in contact with uh, Veronica Sanchez. You'll see her email address, the second one from the bottom on the screen. And if you are at a member institution, but you're not sure if you're a member representative, um, you can check, with, uh, check on our list and, uh, and you can add yourself as a member representative at the, at the website uh, linked above um, and get on our list for uh, all of the information, the newsletters, uh, and all the latest trends that we send out um, through, uh, for, through Melissa's great work in, in communications. You can also see uh, in this chart here listed who to be in contact with for more information about our member services in each of these areas. So we just want to thank you very much for your attention and uh, we are happy to take questions and we'd love to hear your questions. That's uh, you know, an integral part of this webinar, uh, finding out what you'd like to know about CBIE. So if you could write your questions in the questions box, then we will read them out and, uh, and answer them as they come in. We do have a couple of questions that came in earlier. So one of them was, will we re-offer webinars that have already been offered? Um, we, we will, for sure. And we also have, all of our webinars are recorded, uh, so we are able to, uh, to distribute those. So if you'd like to get more information about some of our past webinars, please feel free to be in contact with me, jknight at cbie.ca. Another question was, will we be presenting information on our programs? and on internationalization trends at the conference. And yes, absolutely. Um, uh, we do have a hot topic session that's led by our president, uh, Karen McBride, that will talk about some of the trends in internationalization. And many of the other sessions will detail some of the programs that, uh, that we do here at CBIE. Also, please feel free to, to call us or email us for specific details on any programs. So I see that we have a question here from Nadia asking about um, how much CBIE engages with secondary educators. 
Um, this is Lisa speaking, in case you haven't gotten used to all of our voices yet. Um, I'll just speak to, um, as a membership team, we're working primarily with Canadian uh, institutions, so I'm going to presume that that question was about uh, Canadian secondary educators. I know that uh, Katerina also mentioned a lot of international projects that we do um, with uh, educators around the world as well, but I'll just speak to the Canadian context. I believe that we are up to around uh, 11 school boards, 11 or 13, I, I can't remember off the top of my head across Canada, who form a, an integral part of our membership base. Um, most recently, Avon Maitland School Board came aboard, so shout out if anyone is uh, on the line from Avon Maitland and welcome aboard. Um, we do work with secondary and, and as well as primary uh, educators in that sense that uh, we have a membership category of K-12 school boards. Um, and we work with them in, in many different ways. Um, we're also interested in always learning more about how we can meet the needs and the interests of uh, secondary schools um, as that pertains to your question. Um, we do have, uh, we, we're, we're always doing calls for our members to submit, uh, you know, themes for webinars, um, particular, you know, as a researcher on the, on the team here, um, particular areas of research interest. Um, but I'll just give you a few examples of ways that we uh, help out our secondary school members in particular. Um, we do have uh, research that we get every year. We, we contract uh, data from Citizenship and Immigration Canada, and we do breakdowns of how many uh, international students are coming into Canada secondary schools, um, where they're studying, where they're from, uh, where in Canada they're studying, um, and we also uh, have a lot of research that is coming forth on transitions for international students from, uh, from the pathway of coming in as a secondary school student but then moving into um, post-secondary Canadian education. And I think that this is one of the crux, uh, unique connections that we offer our members, both our post-secondary as well as K-12 members, is um, helping to create those linkages between Canadian levels of education. So we have a lot of networking happening where um, certain school boards are working closely with uh, particular post-secondary members to establish agreements, pathways, um, understanding that many international students who do arrive at the secondary level are interested in pursuing post-secondary education. On the flip side, we're also always very interested in supporting uh, international educators at the secondary level with regard to education abroad. Um, Janine mentioned earlier that one of our key uh, focus areas uh, for the next few years will be um, increasing the number and the quality of education abroad experiences for our Canadian students. And I think that there's a, a good understanding that often Canadian secondary school students, they catch the bug early and they're likely to, those who participate or are exposed to international experiences in their uh, secondary school experience are more likely to pursue global engagement in the post-secondary levels as well, which is great to see. So that will be a, a big part of that push that we're doing in the next few years as, as one of our uh, priorities. I hope that answers your question, just a, just a taste or two, but um, feel free to email us if you have more questions. Um, one of the questions we have here is, will you be sharing the slide deck from the webinar today? We will absolutely be doing that. In fact, we'll post it on our website as well as a link to the recording. Um, and then uh, Erica is going to answer the question, how can institutions near Niagara Falls assist with the upcoming conference? Uh, well, I'm glad to see that there, there, that question came up because we, of course, would love to have uh, all institutions, especially those in the region of Niagara Falls, uh, participating and involved in the conference. Uh, one way would be definitely promotion within your institution to various faculty members and administrators uh, and encouraging them to attend the conference. Um, being close to Niagara Falls is definitely going to be uh, very accessible for you, so I would definitely encourage to spread the word amongst your colleagues and encourage them to come out. There's so many different sessions on various topics that it really can um, touch different people's work and, uh, and interests. Another would be general promotion in the area um, and trying to encourage uh, your partner institutions uh, to come out to the conference as well. Uh, one other one would be student volunteers. We're often looking for, are always looking for volunteers for our conference and 
if you're student, you have students that are particularly interested or keen, um, it's a nice networking opportunity for them. Uh, we would be happy to have um, a discussion with them about an opportunity to work as a volunteer th um, throughout the conference. Uh, and otherwise, if you have some great ideas on how you can be involved or how your institution on a larger scale would like to be involved with the conference, uh, I'd love to, to hear your ideas, so please feel free to um, send me an email and we can discuss some ideas further. So we have a question from Anna. Uh, I'm designing a training program for developing global leaders, and would CBIE assist me in locating a pilot site? Uh, Kat's going to take that question. Hi, Anna. Uh, thanks for your question. Um, this sounds like a really interesting initiative, and um, we are looking, as I mentioned, training programs would be one area that we're, we're working on with our international projects, um, global leadership. Um, what I'd like to suggest in that particular case is if you'd like to get in touch with us, um, I believe the contact information was on the slide, it would be Melissa Payne. You could send her your email and perhaps we could start a conversation about uh, you know, who your target audience is um, and maybe we could share some ideas with you or continue that conversation. Um, it, sounds, it sounds very interesting. Uh, we also have another question coming in that I'll, I'll volunteer to take on, which was, have you started to work in Iran's market? Um, so at the moment, what we're doing on the business development team is we're doing a bit of planning around some of our sectors and themes of priority as well as the regions. Um, so specifically regarding Iran, um, I'd like to encourage you to attend the September or October webinar again. At that time, we'll be able to give you a bit of a better sense of um, whether we have anything specific that we'll be pursuing in Iran at the moment. Hope that answered your question. So we have a quick question from Leah. How much do you anticipate the Resia program to cost? Now, I don't know if that's a quick question, but okay. Melissa is going to take that. Uh, hi, Leah. Thanks for asking. Um, in terms of the Resia program, the cost hasn't been um, finalized yet. However, we should be knowing that in the coming months. We, we will be sending out a, uh, a message to all of our members. If your institution is a non-member, feel free to uh, get in touch with us so we'll know. But at this time, I can't give you a, a guesstimate, and I don't want to trying to pitch a number in case it's wrong. So I really suggest that uh, uh, you get in touch with us in the coming months. So we just have another question here um, from Nadia. Are there any scholarships for secondary students? I think we'll need to take that one back to our scholarships team just so we can give an accurate answer. So Nadia, if you can just email me at jknight at cbie.ca, then I can just be sure to give you an accurate answer on that one. So that was actually our last question. If anyone else has uh, any questions, we do have a few more minutes. Um, so you can get them in by typing them into the questions box. Not, we're not seeing any more come in, so, uh, so I'll just turn it over to Melissa to, uh, to wrap us up. So thanks very much for everyone who joined us this afternoon. Uh, we're very happy for the question that you gave us and we hope we answered to the best of our ability. So thank you very much and we hope that you uh, join our other memoirs in the future. Thank you so much.